I got my start in comedy by um, my agent. I started out as an actor and I was getting to go into audition rooms, I was getting calls, but when I would get into the room, I would freeze up, like completely freeze up and just no life. And my agent was like, I'm, I'm talking to you on a daily basis. I know you have more life than that. What's the problem? And I was like, I don't know. So he said, let's try some stand up, go do an open mic room just to, you know, get you loose. And then we'll, you know, hopefully that'll help you. And my first open mic, I got booked. So then I was like, all right, this can pay for acting classes. This can, you know, it was just at first just a, a venue for money just to be able to help me stay in LA and pay for acting classes and things like that. But then I started to love it. I started to love the feeling of when I got off stage, like I can do anything. I can pick up a Mack truck almost. And yeah, that's how I got started. And I love it. <laughs> when my mother passed away, I just was so upset with my family and with the world and with God that I just left and I went to California and I used to always use that because you know you'll go into an audition room and you'll have a producer just look you right in the face and tell you nope we don't like your look you're too fat you're too dark and so I just started using that as a way to say you know what no one can ever tell me anything in life that will hurt my feelings the way my feelings were hurt after losing my mom. I'm still not at a place to where, because even like now I'm like, okay, hold it together. I'm still not at a place to where I can just joke about it. I finally got to a point where I can remember good times about my parents, because at first it was just mainly, when I would think about them I would be sad, but now it's to a point to where, it's, you know, I'm thinking about good times and I think about, but with my comedy, what people don't realize is I've been doing comedy since I was like five or six because that's how I would get out of whoopings with my mama. And that's how I would get to stay up on Friday nights because she'd always have little get togethers. And so she'd say, Costa, come in here and do that dance. And I'd get to shucking and diving, but I would get to stay up later. So, you know, comedy, we have to be able to laugh. You know, for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, however long that audience is in there, everyone is going through something. And for 30 to 45 minutes, if we can forget about it, and if I can laugh and let people know, hey, I'm just as human as anyone else, and like just now, I got a waist train on and I'm about to faint. I don't mind, you know, making fun of myself to let people know, it's okay, we're, we're normal, we're human, and let's just forget about all of that and, and have a good time. A friend of mine, she's another female comic, and she told me to always, we have a line, you know, because you're gonna get hit on, just period, point blank. And the bad part about doing comedy is that when you tell a guy flat out like, ew, no, are you crazy? You know, you won't get booked. You'll go from having stage time to no stage time. So when a guy just hits on you, a, you know, a male comic just hits on you, you just go, well, are you crazy? And you just keep it pushing. That way you're not saying no and they don't feel rejected because, you know, we have egos. Even, you know, we want it to be like it's a brother-sister type situation, but unfortunately, you know, it's not always like that. And Nine times out of ten, you know, it's a, it's a male, it's a predominantly male, you know, business and, you know, you just, you won't get any stage time and I tend to try to, I'm one of those female com comedians that I'm okay with, you know, my looks, I'm okay with saying, hey, I want to put my best foot forward. My mother used to tell me, I don't care if you got two dollars in your pocket, you walk out of the house like you got a million bucks. So I'm not ashamed, you know, of, you know, my appearance and I always want to look great, but you're gonna get hit on. So I was watching one of the comedian, one of the shows and one of the weigh-ins told uh, one of the comedians, like, man, why are you dressed like that to one of the females? And I was so happy that she said, well, you didn't say that to any of the males. They have on their best suit, but if I have on my best dress, it's a problem. So you just have to try to leave with anything. You gotta try to leave the negativity behind you and try to ignore it and just keep pushing forward with a smile on your face. <laughs> My brand is having fun and you're never too serious or never too big to have fun, make fun of yourself, like be honest and it comes from within because if you look at like Richard Pryor, if you look at the greats, Richard Pryor's and all these guys, Whoopi Goldberg, you know, Whoopi Goldberg made fun of her, her looks, Richard Pryor made fun of his, you know, women problems and his, you know, alcoholism. So you got to be real with yourself and you have to be able to relay that to the audience because it'll, it'll be shown, it'll be revealed that you're not being your true self because a lot of, I don't want to say, well, a lot of women don't want to, you know, admit that, hey, I got weight issues or hey, I got a pack of donuts in my nightstand. You got to be real about it. And that's my, that's my brand to just say, hey, I have issues, I have problems, but I can laugh at myself 
if you want to laugh with me, let's laugh with me. But I'm going to laugh at myself because I know I'm, you know, I'm not perfect and I'm human. The happiest time for a comedian is on stage. You can, you can be having the worst day. You get on stage, it's, it's all good. And when we do, like, as a comedian, you want to get on stage as much as possible. So that's what the open mics are for. And at an open mic, you'll have probably a room full of 20 to 25 comedians and maybe only two just regular people. And that's what we do. You know, we help punch up jokes. It's, it is a sisterhood. It's not all bad, you know what I mean? Because I have some brothers in comedy that I love and that are respectful and that will help you on the road and take you on the road and say, hey, I know for sure this is a good guy, that's a good guy, they're not going to bother you and, and, you know, help you out. But you're right, a lot of the pain is, you know, you can even walk off stage. It's the same for the audience. While we're doing our set, the audience is with us and they're forgetting about their lights just got cut off the day before. And so are we and then when you get off stage all of that comes back so it's just a great time to forget about the rest of the world and just go up there and, and I always say laughter is the it heals the soul I have my degree no one can ever take it away from me and you know Hollywood is hard no one tells you even with you know comedians and that's why a lot of times people are, you know they don't want to they have a hard time paying you for your worth because they see you just for those 30 minutes they don't know the journey that you had to do before that so you know it's a hard deal you got to have tough skin so I tell everyone every little girl follow your dreams absolutely and because you know I'm glad that I went to Hollywood later in life because if I would have went to Hollywood at 19 I probably would have been a black Lindsay Lohan because <laughs> when you get money and you have that type of fame you have you're surrounded by yes people even if you have a friend because everyone wants to take their their team with you you know when you get on so even if you have a friend they now become an employee so what do they turn into a yes person so you have a circle around you of people that are no longer gonna say you don't need to do that they're worried about their check so get your education experience life a little bit so you'll get that tough skin and then you'll have your piece of paper that in case it doesn't work or in the meantime while you're pursuing that dream you don't have to be a starving artist you can actually work to you know to help pursue your dreams because it's a tough it's a very tough business very very tough well starting out when I was a child I loved Lucille Ball I loved Carol Burnett Lily Tomlin like I mentioned before Whoopi Goldberg these were women that I loved and and I'm glad it's starting to get back to that area now because if you think about it like Lucille Ball Carol, they were beautiful and they didn't mind making fun and and being goofy and how because I'll never be able to be the damsel in distress that's never me I'm never gonna be the that's not me I'm the girl and because I get out of like I said I got out of whoopings that way or when I get nervous I'm gonna make a joke so those are people that I looked up to then like now I love you know uh, like Lonnie Love, she's on The Real. So if you see, you know, we've got comedians now on talk shows and what a lot of people don't realize too with your sitcoms, behind those sitcoms, it's a comedian. It's a comedian behind them. So it's, it's, it's good to see that people are following their dreams and they're working and, you know, they're bringing some, you know, comedic timing to it because it's, it's great. When I first graduated, I graduated in June and I had seniors, I had senior English class and I taught, I was a basketball coach and a volleyball coach. So I graduated in June and I started teaching in August, but I had seniors. And when I tell you my classroom was a wreck, like I used to have to leave my door open because my, my, my sister teacher was like, oh my good, because think about it, when you're a senior, you either know where you're going to college or you have no thoughts of going to college. So the little girls thought they could beat me up and the little boys actually thought they could take me to Jack in the Box or something. So it just, it was a bad deal. But then when it came to athletics period, it was on and cracking. So don't laugh. But so if I weren't in entertainment, I would definitely be teaching and coaching and I would not have any social media. Yeah, none, zero zilch, shut it down, none of it. <laughs>
hair grease, and all the extra things. Have a great day. I'm about to die right now. Let's go. Okay.